Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that you be very cold or hot. Be cold or hot. So then because you are, I got a King James Bible here I grabbed and left with. Sorry about that. It's okay. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and know not that you're wretched and miserable and poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold tried in the fire, so that you may be rich and have white raiment, that you may be clothed, and that the shame of your nakedness does not appear. Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is what we need. I want you to hear this morning, and the Lord wants us to hear. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. During the week, uh, let me just say this. I believe that the King of Kings is knocking at our door. He's right at the door. And I've had so many things that have happened over the years concerning the King. There have been times when I have gone into what's called travail, weeping and groaning and crying out from the depths of my being. And when that happened, I would begin to cry out, the King is coming, the King is coming, the King is coming. But the amazing thing is, following those words, the both two times it happened, I began to cry out, there'll be no mistaking who's doing the works when he comes. The king is coming, the king is coming. There'll be no mistaking who's doing the works when he comes. The beginning of the, the, beginning of the week, uh, I was getting revelation about a friend of mine, Joe. Joe, all week long, Joe, night and day. Every time I looked in my spirit, Joe, Joe, Joe. And so uh, I was wondering, what is going on? And, uh, oh boy, this could take a long time. So I just, uh, let me just close this all in because I'm sharing like, you know, 10 years of stuff and trying to fit it into a couple of moments here. What happened at Joe's? I was in a time when I was not ministering, uh, I was not even in church at that time, about three or four years ago, and I was sitting by my dining room table and I was crying out to the Lord. I was so frustrated. I wasn't leading worship. I wasn't preaching. I didn't have a home church, and I was crying out to the Lord, and I had heard that a friend of mine, had, they were starting a Friday night meeting in their home, and uh, I said, I just cried out to the Lord, and I said, you know, if you want me to go to, to hook up with them for some reason, Lord, then, then have this brother Mike called me. I hadn't seen Mike in 25 years. He was the one that was up here from Alabama to plant this church, this revival ministry. And I said, Lord, you just have him call me if you want me to connect with them. Within three or four minutes, five minutes, the phone rang and I picked up the phone and on the other end of the phone said, oh, this is Evangelist Mike. How you doing, Brother Mark? I'm talking I hadn't seen the brother in 25 years, brothers and sisters. So they invited me to come over and lead worship. I think I might have shared this before. We're going to go someplace else. They invited me to lead worship and, and I'll check out. Obviously, the Lord answered my prayer. He wanted me to go check out what was going on. So I go over there, and the first night I, I get my guitar out, and I prayed, and I prayed this. Well, I won't get into the whole prayer, but I prayed, uh, you know, Lord Jesus, we invite you to come here. We invite you to come and reign in this place. Take our hearts. Come and flood this place with your heart and your spirit, Lord. We invite you to come. And guess what happened? Have I told you this? Guess what happened? The woman who's been a friend of mine for 25, 30 years, a Christian, we sung together, she rebukes me in the middle of the group, right in front of everybody, and says, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. He's already here. We don't do that here. And I was like, hello. So I said, oh, you know, I said, oh, okay, all right. So, uh, you know, I just began to lead worship. We had a nice time, and uh, I came back the next week. 
Now, I was in a bit of a shock. I mean, we don't invite Jesus in, in, into here because he's already here. I go back the next week, and my custom has been to invite the Lord and the Holy Spirit to come into the meetings, and he quite often has come graciously. So I just did it again. <laughs> you know, I just did it again. Lord, we invite you here. I got my guitar. And, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We don't do that here. We don't do that here. He's already here. The Bible says whenever two or three are in the midst gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Yes, that Bible does say that. Absolutely. That's the word of God. A couple of weeks later, I, I went there and I sat there. Father. I sat there and the Spirit of God came upon me. Please, I'm not being, this is, I had no, I, there was no criticalness in my spirit. This is all about love. It's all about love. I'm sitting there and the Spirit of God came upon me saying, tell them, honor the Father. Honor the Father. It's like, it's like waves. Honor the Father. Honor the Father. Honor the Father. You need to tell them, we need to be quiet and stop and just honor the Father. Honor the Father. And what happened was, I couldn't get in anywhere. Someone was praying, shouting in tongues. Someone was striking up a song. Someone was praying about the car that broke down. Someone, and I, I couldn't get in with what the Spirit of God wanted to do in that group. And finally, I just said, even with the Spirit of God on me, I disobeyed and I just said, forget about it. I, I just can't do it, Lord. We left the meeting that night with the Spirit of God still on me, went in to get a cup of coffee with a couple of brothers. The coffee, the coffee uh, Dunkin' Donuts was closed. So I said, brothers, you know, the Spirit of God is still upon me. Can we pray? We stood there, three of us. We just stood there in the parking lot. And I just prayed, Father, we honor you. We honor you, Father. We honor you. I don't even know what I prayed. But... The Spirit of God fell upon us as if some kind of tremendous lightning beam of power came from heaven upon us. And we just stood there for like 10 or 15 minutes just looking at each other in the glory of God. I was driving here this morning and the Spirit of God came upon me and showed me a meeting I had gone to lead worship at. I was invited to lead worship at another meeting up on the North Shore. That's another whole, that's another incredible divine meeting there. The, the Lord had given me the name of the man and told me where to go to meet the man. And I ended up sitting at a table at a dinner after a church service. And I got introduced to the man that God had given me his name. We began to do meetings together. But this was, a, this was the first prayer meeting I went to at his house. We didn't know each other. There, David was there. There was a bunch of starving, hungry, thirsty, desperate people to know God, to, to sense and know the reality of God, to have an outpouring of the Spirit, a visitation of the Spirit, we were dying. We were dying for the Lord to come for an outpouring. So we get in there, and we're all looking, you know, introduced ourselves or whatever, and I got my guitar, and all I did, I strummed my guitar once just to tune, just, just to tune it. I strummed it. And the power of God came through the wall in that living room, and just blowing into the living room. Tremendous power. Power probably in the top three I've ever experienced. Just blowing into the room. Blowing into the room. And yes, I did pray and invite the Lord to come. But it wasn't until I struck that guitar chord that the glory and the power of God came into that room. And we spent hours there that night, David. Hours in the presence of God. Shocked, stunning, holy, breathtaking. Okay. We could, uh, could go on for months. I believe we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity in our own lives. We have an opportunity here. God wants to do something special in this church. It's been prophesied over and over and over and over and over. I've been told through the years, this, that, that, that. We have an opportunity in our own lives. And as every congregation, when Jesus comes knocking on the door, and that wasn't the only time back at that other meeting, the Spirit of God would try to come into the meeting and we would drive, they would drive him out. It's not, I'm not holding anyone responsible for that. We all are in different places of sensitivity to the presence of God. So, but sometimes the Holy Spirit is just telling us to be quiet. 
you need to be quiet. I'm trying to come in. The river's trying to come in, and our own activity and our own, all the stuff that goes on actually can drive the river. It was like, like unplugging the river trying to rise in the meeting and just people start doing things, just like boom, unplug, and the Holy Spirit just, just wane, disappear. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop now. I believe the king is at the door, and when the king comes, what takes place is astounding and incredible and transformative. When the fire of God falls, and the holiness of, of his presence comes into our midst, it will change our church, it will change our life, it will change everything. It will change the community. It will change the area if we obey. So the first thing we need to do is with one heart, say, we do invite you here. See, the problem with the church, and we're going to say something that's going to be interesting. It would take a while to explain it, but you see, they already had God at my friend's church because they had the Bible. They had the Bible and the Bible was their God. They didn't need the Holy Spirit to come in. I'll leave that there, Pastor.